Yo, what's going on guys? I am Joe Alvarez and welcome back. Today, let's talk about Jason Joshua's drum bus processing. I watched a video of his about a couple of days ago and I was mind blown on how he takes a very top down mixing approach to really get a beautiful, crazy knocking sound within his drums. So let's get right into that. I'm gonna dissect the beat and the drums and analyze from the buses to the tracks on exactly what I did to get that same sound that Jason Joshua does. So this is the beat real quick. Notice how the drums knock real clear, have a lot of warmth to it. The rim shot is really crispy in your face, really up front. The kick is really, really nice and warm and loud without being overly over the top or too crunchy the bass is really nice and warm and everything else just fits right around those drums so the first thing i do with the drums i just put them in a summon stack so the way you do that in logic is you come over here to the tracks that you want and then you press command shift and d and then it'll ask you which stack do you want to put it in a folder stack which you can actually affect any of the actual summing of these tracks or folding track which is basically the uh, mute solo and volume options in this case i went with a summon stack so i have the drums over here on the drum stack and what he calls for is the nls bus trick that he does which is this i didn't put it on the kick itself because i felt it was too heavy on the kick for this particular track but i did put it on the snare and it looks like this i'm using studio rack to give me that nice organization that i'm looking for and that's over here and all i have is ns nls channel on each up to eight right and so how that looks is this is mike spike mike 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 spike mike mike and how he's setting that up is essentially this way so the first one is mike and i believe he just puts it up to 0.5 and then everyone else follows the same suit except for the second one is spike and the sixth one is spike and then he says if your drums, in this particular case, my kick was way too saturated using this method, because this is what's going to give you. It's going to give you a nice analog crunch from the console days, right? So that's what we're after. But in this particular case, if your drums sound too heavy, you want to just take off two or six. In this case, I'm actually leave it on because it sounds really good. So this is what the snares sound like without it. It's real subtle, but it's giving the snare a nice three-dimensional feel that's going to bring that rim and that clap that I have layered together right in your face, and it's going to be the star of the show along with the kick. So then after you have the studio rack on the actual drum, the actual drum stack, then you bust it out to a drum bus. The drum bus is pretty unique and somewhat technical, but not really that hard to follow. So... The drum bus is as such, first you have the R bass, just for some body, if you need it. Again, all this is if you need it, but the R bass is going to feed the saturation and the compressor, which is going to give you a nice warm analog sound. So this particular case, I'm hitting the R bass at 80 hertz, and the intensity is pretty low. It's just for the feel of it. So I'm going to take all these off so you can actually hear it, and then put on everything one by one. I'll mute the music for now. So this is without the R bass. And with the R bass. Adding some nice sub harmonics to there and bringing just a little bit of that low frequency at 80 to 100 hertz in your face a little bit. And then the secret sauce after that is the Shadow Hills mastering compressor so the key to this joshua says is you only want to hit it to minus one where that kick is peaking at right where, where the kick where the kick is reducing at sorry so and you want to make sure that opticals engage and when you want to play with the nickel iron steel 
the mindset behind these is steel is going to bring up some really low sub frequencies. Iron is going to give you some low frequencies and nickel is going to give you some of the mid low frequencies. So depending on what you want, if you want punch, if you want just some dump and if you want some sub, then that's dependent on this situation over here. But here, notice how I'm only going to just slightly touch the compression. <clears throat> Nice. So this is before and after. And then really the star of the show in this whole chain process is the black box. So the black box is responsible for just really giving you that nice harmonic distortion, that nice saturation. And what that's going to do is essentially going to give you a perception of volume. So it's going to add more harmonics to your sound, which so our ear, we perceive as, well, it's louder, so it's better. But in reality, the peak volume is not going up, but the saturation of that sound is going up to match that peak level. And in some cases, when you put the saturation on there, the peak volume gets saturated, soft saturated, so the peaks actually go down. And over here, you wanna play with the mix, because you want those transients, as J uh, Jason Joshua says, transients are the god of the song. If you squash all your transients, it's going to be really hard to get that sound to sound really, really loud and commercial ready. So he plays with the mix. He has a saturation around 9 to 10. And then he just mixes the taste over here on this saturation and this mode over here. And then the air, just to taste, just a little bit. And this is the before. It's a big difference. And this is the after. And after. Big, big difference. So if I wanted to, I can just be subtle and drive that down a little bit. Or put it up a little bit. But notice how I said sometimes those peaks go down. Check over here how before, yeah, minus 3.1 dB. But then when you engage the analog black box, this is what it sounds like. So a lot more thump, a lot more crunch without being overly distorted. And you actually almost went down 2 dB of peak volume. And then if you need it, I'm using the demo version, but Spectra makes a cool EQ saturator. In this particular case, I'm not going to use it. But if you need to, you just bump a little bit of that low end, a little bit of that high end, and maybe a bump in the mids and you would get a nice crunchy er sound. So this is what it sounds like with it, which is too much in this particular case. So yeah, in that case, I think it's too much. And let me put in the snares as well so we can hear it all together. So in this case, I'm gonna take the low end frequency out a little bit, just bring it down to zero and then keep this over here and then widen the cue to emulate a console sound. So we can have a little bit of that mid range crunching through and some of that high end. I'm only kissing it at like 0.27 dB only because that black box and shot of hill is really doing its job. And then you wanna put a little bit of the transients back in cause all this analog saturation process is gonna really soft clip those peaks. And if you do that too much, you're gonna lose the excitement of those drums. So the next thing in the chain is the spiff, which is super freaking amazing. And the spiff is just responsible for bringing back or taking away transients. In this case, we're going to take away a little bit of the mid range and then put a little bit more excitement in the high range and a little bit in the low range. And mind you, this, we're only touching this at 3%. So this is very sparsely used. As Jason Joshua says, you only want to reach for this if you really, really need it and you want to be subtle. Because if you go too much, it's going to really make all your sounds just pop out way too much. So this is what it sounds like without it. And with. Without. 
a whiff. Nice, real subtle, but again, it's bringing that clarity and that focus to those transients, which is directly going to translate to getting a nice louder sound because you're saturating your sound and then you bring it back to transients. And again, if you're lacking in the transient department, and sometimes you will if you put this much saturation onto a track, Jason says, hey, you want to go into what he calls a transformer, which is for the upper transients of the sound to really give that illusion that those high end frequencies are really, really nice and shiny without being overly bright and without being overly brittle. But the perception of the saturation that we're going to put into this chain is going to make the drum sound way better. So in this particular case, I'm going to route this bus here, right? I did a drum stack and then I went to a drum bus and I'm routing the drum bus itself to transformer top. I believe he calls it transformer, trans for transients, and it's going to transform the transients. And this particular case, he used the decapitator, which I don't have. So I just use the Sephara from Waves and just added some edge and a little bit of warmth on the preset of Sweet Dirt. This is the transformer here. I'll put it in this mode instead of the mixer mode. I'm coming over here and let's just do a, do a quick before and after. So this is before without the transformer. And with. A nice subtle difference in this particular case. I had a lot of nice transients in there, so it's just blending really well. Not too crazy, but it sounds nice. And then I have an SSL comp after that on 30 attack, uh, minus one on the release. And the threshold you play by ear, ratio at two. Nice. And then I believe they use another distortion from Pro Tools that I don't have. So I just use the MDMX Overdrive from Waves and just play with it in regards to making it sound nice and crunchy without sounding way too distorted. And of course, we want to roll off that low end just to get some of that top end to shine. And we're just rolling off from 2K down just to give the high frequency some shine and he adds a noise gate just in case too much noise is being produced from all that saturation in this particular case the nls's are taken off analog mode and so and so is the ssl comp what's going to happen eventually is if you put a lot of saturation the sustain of all those transients and all those quick one shots are going to come up so you want to have a way to control that by cutting it with a gate so you can take out some of that sustained sound that sometimes you don't always want when you put too much saturation or you put enough saturation to give you the sound you want but not the sustain that you want if that makes sense let me just play that before and after i'll take everything off that i use notice how that kick is just kind of floppy and too fluffy and not really enough crunch and knock that we want in a particular hip-hop r&b track the snare rim shot doesn't really stand out out of the speaker it's just kind of there and not really adding anything much than just a basic rim shot sound and then the top end of the transient of the kick and the and the rim shot doesn't really exist so this is what it sounds like with it now nice and a bonus tip on his bus on his bass bus he puts the studio rack same thing with the nls channels i'm using the studio rack but it's basically that crazy method of putting all the nls channels on there to give it a nice analog sound and then he puts the soothe side chains to soothe so when the kick hits you want that kick to win in this particular track and those subs to just go down a little bit so to do that you want to come to side chain in this particular case i'm just bringing a filter to roll everything off the high end and just really focus on the low end 
and I'm bringing the depth up. I have it at hard mode and mix is at 100% and it sounds like this. So this is without it actually. So the way he describes the kick and the bass or 808 relationship is if your kick and your 808 are both hitting and it's doing where it's coming out of the speaker and making that wop type of sound and it's really going to push that comb. So you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to get that mix really, really loud without really distorting those combs and really breaking your speakers. The objective for this is to have the Soothe knock off some of those low sub frequencies in the bass and let that kick really come through and shine and knock without having that some piled up of volume be way more amplified when it's put together. So this is with it. So notice that the kick, when that bass hits, you can still hear the punch and the nice sub information of the kick, but now the kick lives right in front of the bass ever so slightly in the lower regions. So now when you put them together, they make a nice glue sound as opposed to each of them trying to compete to get out the speaker. Add that all together and you have a really good sound. Again, notice how everything lives in its own space. You have the kick that's nice and punchy, the bass that's nice and warm without competing with that kick. The rim shots and the, the slight layered clap that I have in there kind of lives right in the front where you want it. And everything else just blends really well with everything. Once you get the drums to sound really good and focused, it's really easy to blend everything else in. That's really the key. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you check my affiliate links down below for some plug-in discounts. Leave that like, leave that subscription, and I will catch you next time. Peace.